I'm going to talk about the Circle Track Analyzer today. Circle Track Analyzer also contains our simpler Roll Center Calculator and Roll Center Calculator Plus. Um, first thing I'd like to say, anytime we do a demo movie file, we drop the screen resolution way down. Um, on your computer, you'll probably have a higher resolution screen and such, and the program will look a little different. But we do that to keep the movie file small and easier to download. So with any of our programs, the first time you run it after you install it, it's going to ask you for a registered name. And be sure that uh, you like the name that you type in because this name is going to appear on your printouts and your graphs and stuff. So um, I'm going to type in my name. And you can see as I type in my name, it generates a registered code number here. And I'm going to say I'm going to use that name. And it says, okay, you sure you want to use it? I say yes. Gives us a little warning. And then here uh, you can see we're running the circle track analyzer, but you can select to look at in a demo mode either the simplest roll center calculator, front end only, roll center calculator plus, which is front and rear, or the full circle track analyzer with aerodynamics, corner weights, and just a whole lot more stuff. So we're going to select the roll center calculator, the simplest to start off with. Mm -hmm. And you can see it's telling us it's a demo and some other things about the demo. And if you had purchased the program, you would get a screen like this. Do you have a working code? And depending on whatever working code we give you, it will lock it into either the Roll Center, Roll Center Plus, or Circle Track Analyzer. Uh, let's say you, you missed that. Um, typed it OK. It says it doesn't like it. Here we are in the Roll Center Calculator. But anytime in our programs, you could also click on File and let unlock program options. And you can see here, do you have a working code? Same thing as before. In the Roll Center Calculator, you can see is here's a big button. Click here for the Roll Center Calculator, which is the front suspension. And here is the uh, some other measurements that the newest Roll Center Calculator also uses. Some numbers over here percent weight on the rear, height of the center of gravity, wheelbase. These are used for calculating anti-squat. It's a new calculation in the roll center calculator. And over here are some tire specs, circumference and width. These are only used for uh, drawing the picture in the front suspension screen. So some specs that a lot of you, that are not real critical, but they are there for you to change. And here we are in the roll center calculator. Now, in all our programs, there's these little tip messages that pop up. and um, it's showing you some values on the screen are calculated, cannot be entered by you. And that's these parameters over here that have the background colors, right being for, or red being for the right, blue being for the left, and this gray one here. Um, if you don't, once you read these messages and understand, if you just click on don't show it again and click on OK, and you don't have to look at that again. This other tip message is showing you about this new more details button. That's a very uh, useful button. It's a new feature. And if you can see here, this almost looks like our suspension analyzer, our 3D program. These inputs here are used for two things, these detailed inputs. They're to help you figure out, let's say, on the uh, lower A-arm. The lower A-arm uh, is actually attached to the frame at two points, a front point and a rear point. And they may not be directly in front and behind each other. But the point the roll center calculator wants is this point right here right on what we call the axle line, the line connecting the two center lines of the two tires. So you'll put in a front point and a rear point, and it will then calculate the best um, point to have here on the two-dimensional flat screen. So anyway, and here's anti-dive being calculated up over here, which is, again, a useful tuning parameter. But as far as figuring out roll center and camber gain, it's not really that we don't use it for that. So anyway. But anyway, that's what those tip messages are for. Now, like in our, um, for typing in this program, um, you just, let's say we got the height of the right upper ball joint right here, the A point. And you can see if I change that from 20 to 22, you can see how everything changes on the screen. And uh, very, very powerful program for doing that. Um, and you can put the thing through dive and roll and see not only where things are at ride height, which is this, but you can also see where things, how the roll center is moving to. 
and it shows you here like left and right scrub. Um, this this black uh, roll center height is where it is now dynamically, and the one in gray here is where you started at. So some very powerful features here. Um, you can show the program here. I clicked on draw big, and you can see it in more detail. Or you can just draw a normal where you have all your inputs, and you can see your inputs also. Across the top, we have some options. The options are real important because you are going to want to maybe save this front suspension, save it to a new name. Right now it's called Untitled, but we're going to change it to something different. You can see here I type in Test 1. You can type in anything you want. It could be Jerry's car, whatever. And now you can see we got it called Test 1. And if we go to Recall this, open a saved front suspension. Example front suspensions are ones that come with the program that will give you something to start with. But if we click on File, Open Saved Front Suspensions, you can see here, Test 1 is the one we just saved. You've saved that, a little preview if you click on it here, what it is. <clears throat> You've now saved your program or your um, suspension to a name of your choosing. Other options up here, um, drawing extension lines, don't draw extension lines, background colors or and such, uh, camber gain definitions and stuff. Uh, edit. Edit lets you move lots of points at one time. You can move all the points left, right, up or down, in or out, or swap them left side to right side. Let's say you made a mistake measuring things. Real powerful command. Suspension types. You can see we got different suspension types, McPherson, straight axles, or we can even use double arm with torsion bars. Shimming. Shimming is a very useful um, feature where normally, if, like I did here, I typed in a number and it changed things. But when you, and all the other points stayed the same. But when you shim, you're actually going to move this point out, and this point, this length of this arm is going to stay the same. The length of the spindle is going to stay the same, the length of the lower arm, and you're actually going to change the camber and change the geometry, just like you would in your real car. So shimming is a very powerful feature. Table and graph lets you create tables of... Well, this is a very small table, but of uh, different uh, of different uh, dives and rolls, and see what the the camber is. I'm going to increase this to make it make more sense. And you can see now we've got a much bigger table, and you can graph this table. And real useful. For spotting changes. Comments, you can save comments, help you keep notes about what your suspension is, and obviously help. Um, so this is basically the Roll Center Calculator. Here we are in the Roll Center Calculator Plus, and you can see it looks very similar to our simple Roll Center Calculator. Two big differences. We got now a rear suspension. And when you got a rear suspension and a front suspension, you can do some things with front to rear balance. But we got a lot of different rear suspension types that we can work with. Now, for you three link and four link guys, we don't go into enough detail um, in this program to figure out a difference between a three link and a four link. We're calling them all trailing arm suspensions because all we're interested in is spring spacing where the panhard bar is or J bar, um, if that's the type of suspension you got. But we got. I mean, rear leaf springs we can do, and you can see that's not being drawn because the inputs make no sense for that. But we also have some four links here. Um, this would be like your metric or your late model Mustangs and stuff. So we can do that. And this is all screwed up because it's taking measurements from a uh, from this uh, trailing arm we had here, trailing arm suspension. You can put in a roll bar if you want. You're gonna again. You can change all your measurements. Here we're gonna change a spring angle. Let's say we got a 20 degree angle in the spring, and you can see here I'll change that. So anyway, and again you got file. You can save, save as like in roll center calculator. So you can save a front suspension and a rear suspension. Makes it nice for doing mix and match and stuff. Um, it's figuring out your wheel rates here and bump and roll. But the other big thing, this is the big thing that Roll Center Plus gives you. It's this number right here, this 43.7. And this is telling you front to rear weight transfer, how the weight is being transferred from the inside to the outside tires of the car. 
And it says what you would want on a car like this, and this has to do with your front to rear weight distribution, you'd want 55% of your weight transfer to happen in your front. Well, in this car, it's only 43.7 happening in the front. And it's saying that's going to make a moderately loose condition. The, the back end's going to want to come around on you. And you'd say, well, how do I change that? Well, you change it by stiffening up the front or loosening up the rear. And this option here will let us do that. You click on that option there, and it says, what do you want to adjust? And it says, I want to adjust the rear roll center height, which is basically your pan hard bar. And you say, um, it's suggesting for front lateral load distribution, that's front load transfer, a 55% is what it's suggesting. And you want to change the uh, rear roll center, the pan hard bar. You click on Find Now, and it comes up with the new rear roll center height should be 12.8. Currently, it is at 17. So it's saying you want to lower your front roll or your rear roll bar, not roll bar, I'm sorry, your pan hard bar to 12.8. And uh, if you like that, you could have it loaded in or whatever. Or you could say, well, maybe I don't want to do that with a pan hard bar. Maybe I want to change the front roll bar and obtain the same thing. So anyway, this is a very useful option for trying to figure out handling. And uh, some of these, uh, the front rear roll distribution that you can do in the Roll Center Plus. Another thing the Roll Center Plus gives you is this option of saving an entire vehicle. Uh, in the Roll Center program, you could just save a front suspension, but now because you have a front and rear suspension, you can save an entire vehicle. And that's real handy. That will save the front and rear suspensions together under some name of your choosing. Okay, here we are in the full-blown circle track analyzer, and you can see there is a lot more stuff happening with this program. Um, like in the Roll Center Plus, you still have this classic, we call it class or lateral load transfer. But we also have a more detailed load transfer that we've developed ourselves. And this is also based on aerodynamic effects and crossweight effects. And we believe it is a better way of doing things. And you can see, even though the classic way might say that this might be a an oversteer, loose condition, if you look at the aerodynamics and the cross weight, this could actually be called an understeer condition. And how are we determining that? Well, if you click over here to show dynamic handling, you can see here we got some uh, aerodynamic forces. Downforce being negative is actually lifting on the front. There's no downforce on the rear, no lift or downforce. If you put more spoiler angle in, it would probably get more downforce on the rear. And, uh, and the crossweight. So we can actually see, you see these red bars here are tell us what is the weight when we're right in the apex of the turn, right here in the turn. And these black lines show you statically what it is. So you can see a lot of weight being thrown to the outside. The outside tires have gone way up in weight. But how, what this mix is on the tires and how evenly you're loading these four tires is what we use to determine this uh, handling rating down here. Now, again, in the low resolution screen, you can see something is actually being cut off here. And when I'm done with this movie, I'm going to fix that. But I wasn't aware of that on such a low resolution because nobody really has this low resolution screen anymore. But uh, that's what this rating, uh, handling rating is based on. And you can see some of these pink numbers here, too. That is some baseline condition. Let's say you said, uh, I want to keep this as my baseline condition. It says, you want to keep it as the baseline? I say, yes. And it says, what do you want to call it? I'm going to say, just use that name again. Okay, I'm going to call it that. And here you can see our understeer rating. And um, unlike the other programs, we have a lot more inputs here. And here's some aerodynamic input. So let's say we're going to do something here. Uh, I'm going to put more rear downforce in this car. And for a lift coefficient, that would be a negative 0.2, let's say. Now I'm going to see what is that going to do for me if I can get more downforce. And you see here, I got to update this by going here and then backing out. I don't want to save it as the baseline. And now you can see uh, by putting more downforce on the rear, the rear is going to stick better. And I he have even more of a, an understeer condition than what I had before. You got your engine power curve, and you can actually load it in a power curve from an engine analyzer if you want. This is used for calculating lap times. 
which is another big feature of this program. I'm going to calculate my lap times here. And here you can see your time going around the course. And here is uh, the lap time and average mile an hour. And I'm going to back out of here. And I say, let's do something. Um, let's uh, change. Uh, what are we going to change? Let's take this, uh, put that back to zero, the aerodynamic downforce there. And now we're going to calculate lap times again. And it says, right here, we lost six hundredths of a second or 0.3 mile an hour by doing that. Another option we got here, a lot of people like this. You can watch a car go around the track. You can single step it at any point, then single step it ahead and see what's happening. Here's the dive and roll that the program believes you're going through, in addition to some baseline condition that we've saved for comparison. And here you can see the corner ways from the baseline, the, the open bar drawn in pink, and the red line, what it's doing right now. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of time to get into detail on this, so I'm just showing you what is available. Another thing that's available is these uh, reports, um, some ca suspension calculations. These are things that you've probably seen in uh, different types of uh, textbooks and stuff. Things like uh, roll center natural frequency on the springs, anti-dive, if you've got information in for anti-dive, the instant centers and stuff. Uh, but here's a report a lot of people like. Rule of thumb suggestions, a starting point for either a standard setup or the big bar soft spring setup. And let's see what it, we'll get out of this. And you can see actually here, there's a whole bunch of suggestions here, what you should do, a right rear spring of 48.5 pounds per inch, uh, 287 pound per inch spring in the front, uh, right front, and the 267 pound per inch front spring for the left front. A lot of information here that we give you a suggestion for a starting point. Now, if you're real sharp with suspension tuning, you may be sharper than this, but this is giving you a very conservative, middle of the road suggestion for a starting point for your big bar soft spring setup. You don't want to save it as a baseline. You can make a graph if you want. Uh, that would happen to be engine RPM, I believe. And um, what kind of track you got, different kinds of tracks you can pick, or use specs below when you can type in your own numbers, whether how aggressive the driver is. The more aggressive the driver, the more out to the extreme on a friction circle, if you're familiar with that, or the more close to the edge the driver's going to push the tires. So a moderate driver here, a novice driver is going to be way back from the edge of breaking the tires loose. So anyway, um, other things here, you can actually find the best gear ratio here. Let's just find it right now. And it's saying there that you have to make sure that your uh, specs for what you're trying to find right now are accurate right now. And it's saying for your engine power curve on the track run, it said the found fastest lap time I found was a 4.3 gear ratio, and you got a 5.5 now. Do you want to put it in? I'm going to say no. But it means um, for doing that, you need a pretty accurate power curve from a dyno would be ideal or from one of our engine analyzer programs. Uh, corner weights, another very powerful screen where you can, uh, um, let's say, jack on a corner of the car here. Uh, I'm going eight turns down, and you can see how the cross weight here has changed from 58 to 59 and a half percent right now. These two are not going to change from jacking on a spring. You can change the tire size, or you can uh, move weight around ballast. So some very powerful features in the Circle Track Analyzer, and that is the top of the line we have in this series of programs. We also have a three-dimensional suspension analyzer, which gets even into more detail.